Hey there, this is Mark. In this video, we'll take a look at drawing our own mat. I have this scene with a character cutting the foreground bush, so let's disconnect the arm. And what I'd like to do is scale this character down to be behind the tuft of grass over here, and then behind this tuft of grass over here. So I'll simply select the peg of my character, use the scale tool, and shrink him down. And then we'll move him over here. If I go inside my background, I can see that I have the tuft of grass on its own over here. So using the top view, and I'll just dock this to the right, if I simply move this tuft of grass slightly forward, and I'll use the maintain size to make sure it doesn't change the scale, then I can simply pop the character behind because the tuft is physically forward. Let's undo that and let's place the character in front of this one. I'll go back outside, select my peg, and I will physically move him down this way. I could also scale him more. Now this tuft of grass, and I'll choose the transform tool to prove this. If I select the ground, you can see that it's painted directly on it. So I don't have the option to move it forward or even use as a cutter. Therefore, I have to create my own shape to make sure that that character stays behind the tuft of grass. In order to do this, I'll disable my character for now so I can focus on my background. And I'll zoom in a bit. Then I'll go and select my ground. Now, in order to see this more clearly, I'm going to switch the bitmap resolution of my background in OpenGL to a higher resolution. You can do so by hitting Control Q on a PC while in camera mode, or Command Q on a Mac. And I'll just boost this up to the maximum resolution. Now you can see every other background layer is kept in a bitmap um, conservative mode, shall we say, and the foreground one, or the one we've chosen those for the ground, is crisp and clean so we can focus on that art very specifically. Next, I'll create a new drawing. And you can do this in the timeline by clicking plus drawing, or in the node view by doing control R or command R on a Mac. Call this mat. There's our new drawing. Now, in order to make sure that it stays locked to this background, I'll peg it down from the same peg that the ground is pegged to. That way, if the ground moves around, so does my mat. Next, I'll wire this down here so that I can physically see what I'm working on. You'd want to pick a color that you're comfortable with. I've created a compositing palette here, so I'll just pick one of my matte swatches, and then I'll switch to my polyline tool so that I can draw out a shape. Now I can draw a shape with a line and then fill it later, or I can use this option, which is to autofill the selection once it's closed. I can also click this option so that it'll trim the extra lines off of my shape. Next, you simply want to click and drag your polyline to fill that shape to match the tuft of grass. Simply click and drag to create tangents, or simply click to have a sharp angle. If you make a mistake, you can always refine these later, so don't feel too worried about being perfect in this stage. And I'll just cross the line over here. Now if I miss crossing the line, I can always grab that contour editor white arrow, click on my line, and make sure that it extends out. But it seems to have filled it properly. Unfortunately, it didn't paint it, so I'll just use the paint bucket and click drag that. Next, I'd like to go to my drawing mode, and using my select tool, just make sure that I get rid of my line so that I have a single clean shape as opposed to two individual strokes and fill. So this is filling out the grass quite nicely. I'll disconnect this node, 
And I can either use a cutter to isolate the swatch And you can see this if I add a display. We have our grass because I've said this ground will only show where the mat is. And I've made an extra strand so that my ground still shows through to the main one. And then I could physically choose to move this forward or I can use this shape, drag it outside, and use it to cut away my character. So I'll turn my character back on and I'll add a cutter and then I will drag this into my view so that the character is cut by my shape that I've drawn and now we can see that the shape cutters the background perfectly so that the character is behind the tuft of grass. Now you can use this shape or you could even draw with a circle, a rectangle, any shape you draw will create a matte layer that you can use to affect another layer.